Hello, my name is Uwe Ortmann from Pico Quantenberg in Germany. I'm sitting here with Professor Joseph Lakovic from the University of Maryland. He's also the, the director of the Center of Fluorescent Spectroscopy. Joseph, what inspired you to lead your research to the field of terms of fluorescence? I think what initially inspired me was a wonderful scientist named Gregorio Weber. And I had the privilege of working in Gregorio Weber's lab as a graduate student. And I spent many hours talking with him. And he had a very molecular way of thinking about fluorescence. And I saw at that time that you could visualize the fluorescence experiment, and you could visualize what the molecules were doing. And that was magical to me, that we could use light to understand something that was otherwise invisible. So I just stayed with fluorescence. At the time, I went and did a postdoc in magnetic resonance. That didn't work out very well for me. So I think your, your skills depend also on what you choose. And my skills were not in magnetic resonance. I mean, your research was always very strongly linked to the development of uh, the application and, of course, the instrumentation. What would you think is the most important innovation over those time since you were with, uh, with like Professor Weber? I think there's one general uh, advance that has happened, and it's that you can buy instruments with very high capabilities and you don't have to buy them. Because at this time, you know, uh, fluorescence dominates much of the biological sciences. The, bi the biological scientists do not want to build their instrumentation, and hence uh, it's been that development. Now, the question is, what has enabled these instruments? And they've been enabled by multiple technologies. The time-resolved fluorescence would not have the impact that it had without the availability of pulse lasers that were of reasonable cost and reasonable complexity. So we had to have the pulse lasers. The other thing we needed was a way to uh, process the information. And the way we process the information now of numerous photons involved, collected at numerous different times without modern computers, it would be impossible. And then the optics has improved a great deal. The optics is diffraction limited. We now have confocal optics. We now have multi-photon excitation. And all, there's no one technology uh, that has contributed to this. So the machine gets simpler, more cost-effective, easier to operate. How would you see in, let's say, 10 to 20 years from now, how would the machine look like or how would be the impact on the research of spectroscopy, especially times of spectroscopy? Oh, gee. That's, that, it's always difficult to predict the future. So I, I think we, we should, should go where we came from. Uh, fluorescence could not penetrate the biological sciences, or at least time-resolved fluorescence, if, if it were not for the low-cost solid-state lasers. So, so that had to happen. And I think right now we're going to look back in 10 years and think that the present instruments look primitive because they're based on all separate components. We, we have a laser diode over here. We have a photo detector over here. You're using free space optics to, uh, to, to connect them all. And I think those are all going to wind up being uh, compact devices where there's very little free space optics except for where the sample is and the light's going to be manipulated uh, on a nanoscale rather than on a macroscopic scale. So it's going to be smaller, simpler, maybe an integrated device that will be the future of time resolved fluorescence. Uh, I think it will be the future of time resolved fluorescence, and it will be the way that time resolved fluorescence uh, shows up on your cell phone. I mean, that, that, right. sounds, that sounds inconceivable, but it, it's completely conceivable at this time. Your, the cell phones have a, a bright LED. There's no reason that can't be pulsed. The cell phones have CMOS detectors, which are very sensitive. And publications have already appeared uh, putting little attachments on your cell phone to do cell imaging or bead imaging. And I think that's going to continue. Well, like, thank you very much for sharing this vision with us. Thank you for Joe for this interview. Thank you for the opportunity.